Today, um, I wanted to revisit something we've discussed previously, but that I had been asked a question about. And it has to do with exporting data from Access to Excel. Now we can be talking about tables, queries, form or report record sets, but how do we take data from Access and push it out to Excel using Excel automation, so VBA. And normally, in the demos I, I provided, um, we'd use a function like this, and in which we try to get an existing instance of Excel if it exists. If not, we create one. And then we're going to go and create our workbook, add a worksheet, do our manipulation. Then we close the workbook, exit out of Excel. So we shut down Excel, release our variables. So if we're doing one operation, this works marvelously well. But imagine the case where I want to export, let's say, all of the tables in my database out to Excel. If we were to do this, each time we would be performing an operation, so exporting a table, it would have to go through the process of reinitializing Excel, reinitializing the workbook, the worksheet, then perform the operation and then close everything down. And then we come back to the next one and it has to reinitialize again, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It will work fine, but it is not optimal. It is not necessarily the fastest. Um, and there, there's just simple common sense here is we want to reduce these initialization operations to optimize the process and reduce the amount of time it takes. So that's what I wanted to touch upon today is how do we take something like this and optimize it, turn it into something a little bit better for the scenarios where we want to perform multiple operations on a workbook, not just a single export. So I have this database here with just sample data. And if we just take a very quick overview of it, I've got a module DB and all that is is a self-healing object variable for the database itself, okay? And then here, I've got my function to perform the export process in which we iterate over all the tables in the database. And for each one, we're gonna get a record set of the table. And we're gonna then export that record set to the workbook. And then here I have my mod, um, that is all of my Excel functions that are actually used for the process. And if we just very briefly take a look at the export routine here, you'll see it's much simpler. There's no initialization trying to uh, get object or create object of Excel. It's not there anymore, just as much as we're not closing out of it and exiting it and saving or whatever the case may be. Because those are now performed here, even though it doesn't look like they are, they are. So how does it work exactly? Well, first of all, we have to understand that, of course, I'm using self-healing object variables for Excel as well. So the first time it gets called, it has to go through this process to get an instance, but all subsequent calls, it will just keep reusing the one in memory. So it won't have to go through this process every time. So yes, the first time we use it may be slightly slower, but all subsequent uh, uses will be optimized. Let's take a look. Let's just run through the export itself. I'm coming here and I'm right off the bat going, hey, take Excel and set the screen updating to false and set its visibility to false. I don't want my users seeing this until I'm done what I need to do. And you're saying to yourself, whoa, whoa, whoa. But how is it working with Excel? You haven't done the get or the uh, create object. And you're right. But if we look at the self-healing object variable, oh, Excel, it automatically does it. It's, depending if you're using early binding or late binding, doing the new Excel or the create. So right off the bat, it is being done. You just don't realize it because we're using a self-healing object variable. Next comes Excel workbook. I want to add a new workbook. So if I just come here, it's going to redirect me to my Excel module. I have this and it's just going to come here and it has an, an input argument if I want to, where I could open existing file or in this case, I'm going to be doing just creating a new blank one. 
So I have a reusable function for opening and working with a workbook. So that's what this does. It's going to, this will launch Excel. This will add a new blank workbook. Then I come in here, I loop through my tables, like I said, and it's going to go and it's going to add a sheet if need be. And it's going to set the name of the worksheet to the name of the table. So then it makes it easier when you're in Excel to recognize what data is on what tab on work, worksheet. And then here it comes and it's going to get a record uh, set for the table that we're currently looking at because we iterate over them. So that table creates a record set and we export it. And the export is very simple. We've got the record set in memory. We're just going to come here. We're going to build a header row. And we're going to do a little bit of formatting, set the font color, the background color, uh, center align things. And then here in this one line, we export all the data. And then I do a little bit of formatting just to spruce things up a bit. I freeze the panes, add auto filter. I resize the columns and the data fits in it properly. And I'm done. And then I come here, I close out my record set, and I move on to the next table. And it's the exact same thing. Create the new worksheet, rename the worksheet, generate the record set, export the record set, so on and so forth. And then we come here and we set the screen updating to true. We make Excel visible to our users. And then here I'm clearing out the object variable. In reality, like I say here, normally you won't clear out the object variable until you close the database because you don't want to clear it after each operation or each use. So this is something I would call when the database is closed only because you want to keep that in memory. You've spent the time getting the variable. You don't want to just wipe it away in case you need to use it again. But I put it here for this example. Um, you'll also see if you look in the, uh, the functions, I also have a function or a subroutine, should I say, to close Excel if I wanted to, right? So come here, we could close the workbook, we could quit Excel if we wanted to, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not using it here because I don't want to close Excel. I want to leave it visible for my users so they can see it. We could also at this point save it if we wanted to. Well, you most certainly want to save it if you're going to close it. So, but I'm just illustrating here. In my case, I'm not using it. I don't need it. So, all, when all is said and done, I'm now here getting a single instance, iterating through the tables one by one, adding a worksheet, adding a worksheet, adding a worksheet, and then closing out of the instance and clearing it. So we're only doing that operation one time. We're only creating or accessing a workbook one time. So we've optimized the process. And if we uh, take a look at it. Okay, and we just try to run it. And you know what we'll do here is we're going to add for the fun of it to events. Okay, we'll run it and you'll see processing table departments, department employee, and we just see so on and so forth. Uh, the export process is being performed. Now, we could put this to a progress bar, the progress form. That would be an ideal situation. Um, and obviously, these are massive tables. I, these are very large tables, so the process will be a little slower. But for regular, normal tables, it is almost instantaneous. Um, so as it runs through this, you'll see it's exporting everything. Excel obviously is open in the background, but it's hidden because we have visible set to false. And then it appears once the entire operation is done, because here, like I said, we set screen updating invisible to true. And as I said to you, it creates a tab and renames it the name of the table. So each table is represented by its own sheet. And all the data is there. And like I said, these are not small tables. Over a million records. Okay. 
So just to summarize very briefly here, the way we've taken our initial function is we've broken down several of these aspects of the function into separate subroutines or functions that we only call one time. Or in this specific case here, the initialization, we've turned it into a self-healing object variable, which is even better because it will be called only when it needs to be called. But that is really all of it. It is not complex to take one of these functions, whether it be Word, Excel, PowerPoint, whatever the case may be, and optimize it so you can reuse it and do multiple operations using the same call. Reduce those IOs, reduce time wasted processes in initializing the applications and just basically do it once, perform your iterations, your operations, and then close out of it. Um, but like I said, do be careful here. If you're using self-healing object variables, you don't necessarily want to clear it out at the end of your function. It really is something you want to keep in memory for as long as the database is open. That should only be done when the database itself is closed. So that's why this is actually for clearing out object variables and several other things. This is when it's good to actually have a pop-up form that is hidden when you start the database. And basically it will be the last form that gets closed when you exit out of the database and you set an event um, when the form closes that it goes through and does some of these operations, clearing out, for instance, all your object variables. It's just to be tidy and uh, do things properly. As always, thank you for spending your time with me. Greatly appreciate it. If you don't mind, like, subscribe, share. If you can promote my channel in any way, be greatly appreciated. And we will see you in the next video. Have a great day, guys.